And the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron and his sons, and to all the sons of Israel, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. If any man of the house of Israel kills an ox or a lamb or a goat in the camp, or kills it outside the camp and does not bring it to the door of the tent of meeting, to offer it as a gift to the Lord before the tabernacle of the Lord, blood guilt shall be imputed to that man. He has shed blood, and that man shall be cut off from among his people. This is to the end that the sons of Israel may bring their sacrifices, which they slay in the open field, that they may bring them to the Lord, to the priest at the door of the tent of meeting, and slay them as sacrifices of peace offerings to the Lord. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood on the altar of the Lord at the door of the tent of meeting, and burn the fat for a pleasing odor to the Lord. So they shall no more slay their sacrifices for satires, after whom they play the harlot. This shall be a statute forever to them throughout their generations. And you shall say to them, Any man of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among them, who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice, and does not bring it to the door of the tent of meeting, to sacrifice it to the Lord, that man shall be cut off from his people. If any man of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among them, eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement, by reason of the life. Therefore I have said to the sons of Israel, No person among you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger who sojourns among you eat blood. Any man also of the sons of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among them, who takes in hunting any beast or bird that may be eaten, shall pour out its blood and cover it with dust. For the life of every creature is the blood of it. Therefore I have said to the sons of Israel, You shall not eat the blood of any creature, for the life of every creature is its blood. Whoever eats it shall be cut off, and every person that eats what dies of itself or what is torn by beasts, whether he is a native or a sojourner, shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. Then he shall be clean. But if he does not wash them or bathe his flesh, he shall bear his iniquity. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do as they do in the land of Egypt, where you dwelt, and you shall not do as they do in the land of Canaan, to which I am bringing you. You shall not walk in their statutes. You shall do my ordinances, and keep my statutes, and walk in them. I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my ordinances, by doing which a man shall live. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach any one nearer of kin to him to uncover nakedness. I am the Lord. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father, which is the nakedness of your mother. She is your mother. You shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife. It is your father's nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your sister, the daughter of your father or the daughter of your mother, whether born at home or born abroad. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your son's daughter or of your daughter's daughter, for their nakedness is your own nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife's daughter, begotten by your father, since she is your sister. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister. She is your father's near kinswoman. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, for she is your mother's near kinswoman. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother. That is, you shall not approach his wife. She is your aunt. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife. You shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife. She is your brother's nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her and of her daughter. You shall not take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. They are your near your near kinswoman. It is wickedness. And you shall not take a woman as a rival wife to her sister, uncovering her nakedness while her sister is yet alive. You shall not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness while she is in her menstrual uncleanness. And you shall not lie carnally with your neighbor's wife and defile yourself with her. You shall not give any of your children to devote them by fire to Molech and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. 
and you shall not lie with any beast and defile yourself with it. Neither shall any woman give herself to a beast to lie with it. It is perversion. Do not defile yourselves by any of these things, for by all these the nations I am casting out before you defile themselves. And the land became defiled, so that I punished its iniquity, and the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you shall keep my statutes and my ordinances, and do none of these abominations, either the native or the stranger who sojourns among you. For all of these abominations the men of the land did, who were before you, so that the land became defiled. Lest the land vomit you out, while you defile it, as it vomited out the nation that was before you. For whoever shall do any of these abominations, the persons that do them shall be cut off from among their people. So keep my charge never to practice any of these abominable customs, which were practiced before you, and never to defile yourselves by them. I am the Lord your God. And the Lord said to Moses, Say to all the congregation of the sons of Israel, You shall be holy, for I the Lord your God am holy. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make for yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. When you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings to the Lord, you shall offer it so that you may be accepted. It shall be eaten the same day you offer it, or on the next day. Anything left over until the third day shall be burned with fire. If it is eaten at all on the third day, it is an abomination. It will not be accepted, and everyone who eats it shall bear his iniquity, because he has profaned a holy thing of the Lord, and that person shall be cut off from his people. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field to its very border, neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. You shall not strip your vineyard bare, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another, and you shall not swear by my name falsely, and so profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor or rob him. The wages of a hired servant shall not remain with you all night until the morning. You shall not curse the deaf or put a stumbling block before the blind, but you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. You shall do no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. You shall not go up and down as a slanderer among your people, and you shall not stand forth against the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason with your neighbor, lest you bear sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear any grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. To the choir master, a maskal of the sons of Korah. All this has come upon us, though we have not forgotten you, or been false to your covenant. Our heart has not turned back, nor have our steps departed from your way, that you should have broken us in the place of jackals, and covered us with deep darkness. If we had forgotten the name of our God, or spread forth our hands to a strange God, would not God discover this? For he knows the secrets of the heart. No, for your sake, we are slain all the day long, and accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Rouse yourself. Why do you sleep, O Lord? Awake. Do not cast us off forever. Why do you hide your face? Why do you forget our affliction and oppression? For our soul is bowed down to the dust. Our body clings to the ground. Rise up. Come to our help. Deliver us for the sake of your merciful love. And when he returned to Capernaum after some days... It was reported that he was at home, and many were gathered together, so that there was no longer room for them, not even about the door. And he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men. And when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had made an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Child, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts, Why does this man speak like this? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately, Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they questioned like this within themselves, said to them, 
Why do you question like this in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, your sins are forgiven, or to say, rise, take up your pallet and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, take up your pallet and go home. And he rose and immediately took up the pallet and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. He went out again beside the sea, and all the crowd gathered about him, and he taught them. And as he passed on, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as he sat at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners were sitting with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And the scribes of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, said to the disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth to an old garment. If he does, the patch tears away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and so are the skins, but new wine is for fresh skins. One Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the showbread, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Everything belongs to the Lord. That's why Leviticus forbids sacrificing animals away from the tabernacle. All sacrifices are to be made to the Lord. Leviticus also forbids drinking blood, a practice found in other sacrificial religions, because the life is in the blood. God desires us to partake of his life, not the life of the beasts. Leviticus also lays down very specific rules governing sexual acts, forbidding incest, homosexual acts, bestiality, and other problematic sexual practices. These rules, together with the following ones that cover honest dealing, show how holiness is meant to infuse every area of life. No realm is cut off from God's sight, and in fact, it is in the seemingly mundane parts of life that our commitment to him is tested. Jesus, too, shows how everything belongs to him. He has the power to forgive sins and to heal. He is Lord of the Sabbath. Nothing is outside his purview. He can dispense from fasting and even call sinners to be his followers. Jesus is in control of the situation and of his own mission as Messiah. How can you more fully acknowledge Jesus' lordship of everything and of your life in particular?